When did you first get started drumming? Probably when I was, I was 13, 14, something like that. I think uh, my parents had a friend who played piano, jazz piano really. And uh, he came around and I think he bought a pair of uh, my brushes. But I just started playing on the back of a biscuit tin or an African drum or something. And I wasn't really particularly serious about it. I didn't have a kit for another four, three or four years, I would think. And then a bunch of uh, friends, we got together and decided we'd start a band. The fact that none of us could play the instruments didn't seem to be an inhibitor. And um, we more or less just went, well, we'll ask for money for Christmas from uh, all our relative friends and relatives. And um, it was decided, I think, the guitarist was already chosen. I think he'd already bought his guitar. But bass player and drummer, we both went, oh, well, that's what we'll do. And I went up to a shop in the West End called Chazzy Foots. Still, still exists, just. Um, and for £7.50, bought a small bass drum, a snare drum, and a hi-hat. And that was it. Launch pad. It's a terrible kit. <laughs> And uh, and then one of your first bands was uh, Sigma Six. Yeah, that was sort of later. I, I mean, I, play, I had the sort of teenage band at home for a while, and then a little bit of playing at school. Uh, but then um, we went when I was at college. Uh, after a year or so, someone in the school had some songs they wanted to play to a publisher and asked if there were people who could play the songs. And um, I was in a, a year this, uh, in architecture school with Roger and Richard. And there were a couple of other people in the year who also either played or sang. And, and so we put a band together for that, which I think was at some time was called the Sigma Six. Anyway, the publisher listened to the songs and said that the songs weren't bad, but the band were terrible. So we thought, right, well then, we better carry on. And then eventually uh, you created, uh, well, the Screaming Abdabs, was it? Yeah, I have no idea what order the, the mega deaths, the Screaming Abdabs, the architectural Abdabs. The, uh, yeah, there were more names than gigs, if you put it like <laughs> that. And, and Sid, had, Sid Barrett had come into the picture at some point there. Yeah, that's right. And almost quite early on after the arrival of Sid, I think we began to, uh, well, I think we were the tea set for a while, and basically what happened was that we were doing a show somewhere, and, um, and there was a band who went on before us, who were also called the tea set, and the promoter just said, you can't be the tea set, because they are, and uh, Sid came up with the idea of Pink Floyd from uh, an old uh, blues record with Pink Anderson and Floyd Council on it. The rest is history, as they say. And initially it was the Pink Floyd, right? Yeah, it was the Pink Floyd sound initially. Oh, yeah. But uh, it, that, was, well, it was too difficult to fit onto a poster, I suspect. So it got chopped and cut. And um, as a drummer, were you, uh, what were you listening to? Were you influenced by jazz, different styles? So, you know. I think there were two major influences. For me, I'd always listened to jazz and liked it, and the sort of the bebop, the, the Art Blakeys, and uh, it Kenny Clare and Chico Hamilton um, were all things I listened to. Although I didn't really, uh, I didn't really emulate them. I, uh, they're probably in, they were an influence without being something that I sort of studied. Um, but then, of course, what happened was um, the thing that sort of drove the band on was, was what was happening in the music scene of the day. And, of course, we were actually going at the bands we could go and see were Jimi Hendrix, Cream, or earlier versions of you know, John Mayall, um, Spencer Davis, uh, and The Who, and so on. So those sort of people were really the thing that made us think that's what we want to be. I mean, initially, I think we thought we would be an R and B band because that's what everyone wanted to be. Right. And then, um, what was it like, you know, uh, working with Sid in, in those days? Uh, psychedelic, 
music and everything, is it? Well, I think the, the big thing about the London underground, the whole psychedelic scene and so on, was that it was an, it was an opportunity. You know, so much of music is not only about being good or being talented or whatever, but right place, right time. And we were seen as being, you know, the, the vanguard of um, this new new music. And the record companies all suddenly started looking to see what this new thing was. No one really understood it. And in our particular case, so we weren't, we were certainly not very accomplished musicians. It was pretty amateur, really. But it was different. And, and that, for us, was the launch pad. And that gave us a record deal and a record, you know, once... Once you become professional, once you turn professional, suddenly you're playing music every day. You inevitably uh, improve relatively quickly.